We've learned that President Trump has called off his trip to South America this weekend so that he can deal with the response to Saturday's alleged chemical attack in Syria. It happened in Douma, about 10 miles northeast of the Syrian capital, Damascus. The Assad regime is suspected of attacking the rebel-held city with a chlorine agent. Observers say dozens suffocated to death. President Trump condemned the attack and said the U.S. will respond. We can't let that happen. In our world, we can't let that happen, especially when we're able to, because of the power of the United States, because of the power of our country, we're able to stop it. And for more, we bring in CBS News national security correspondent David Martin from the Pentagon. David, do we know yet what military options the Pentagon may be considering? We sort of all thought we'd have more clarity at this point. Well, we don't know the specific uh, targets they're looking at, but they have presented military options to the president. Uh, whether or not he has yet picked an option is not clear. But if you look at the attack that uh, took place uh, a year ago in Syria, when the U.S. launched 59 cruise missiles uh, in uh, retaliation for a uh, use of sarin gas against uh, a village in Syria, uh, you can get some idea of what's under uh, consideration here. That attack uh, a year ago was intended to convince Syria never to use chemical weapons again. And at the time, uh, the Secretary of Defense, James Mattis, warned that if they did use chemical weapons again, they would pay a, quote, very, very stiff price. So it follows uh, that if they have uh, used chemical weapons again, if the evidence uh, supports what uh, the U.S. is saying, that it appeared to be a, uh, a chemical weapons attack, uh, then it would follow that this attack is going to be uh, larger and go against more valuable targets than the previous attack, which was confined just to the airfield from which the plane that dropped the chemical munition uh, flew out of. Mm -hmm. uh, this time, I think you would you could expect uh, some of the targets to be much higher up the uh, chain of command within the Syrian military uh, to include uh, headquarters and uh, uh, intelligence buildings and, and uh, targets like that. Also, uh, both the president and the secretary of defense have singled out Russia and Iran as being uh, sort of the key enablers of Syria in, in being able to carry out uh, another suspected chemical weapons attack. So <clears throat> I think it's not out of the, the realm of possibility that the U.S. would also target uh, Iranian facilities in Syria. I think it is unlikely that the U.S. is going to attack uh, a Russian facility directly uh, for the simple fact that that could trigger a uh, a nuclear crisis. Certainly. And have these recent tensions impacted the president's previous idea of pulling troops out of Syria? They're sort of on two different tracks. I mean, the one is is taking place out in the uh, the eastern uh, part of Syria, and that's against ISIS, and it's a, a question of just rooting ISIS out of these remaining uh, little uh, uh, pockets that it still holds out there. And this, of course, is taking uh, place around the uh, the capital of uh, Damascus and is an entirely uh, different issue. I think the only place where they uh, meet is that after the last airstrike uh, in uh, April of uh, 2017, the U.S. had to take uh, extra force protection measures for its uh, special operations forces out in the eastern, northeastern part of uh, Syria in case Syria or Russia or Iran uh, tried to retaliate for that. And then every time you hunker down, that, of course, uh, limits your ability to conduct offensive operations. So I, if, if there is an, a strike, I think you would expect to see them hunker down again. That might have a temporary effect. But ultimately, I, I think these are two separate issues uh, proceeding on, on two different tracks. All right. Well, David Martin at the Pentagon, thank you. Sure thing.